Hello. I am going for a walk in a few minutes, and maybe I will do a little voice rant. So I was saying how, you know, the society you live in is totally asinine. In this society, people who learn things in school are said to be stupid. If you ask me, that doesn't make sense and it's not possible. So I figure this whole society is merely controlled by an alien computer or something. How did the would-be Trump assassin, how was he able to wander around for over an hour with his tools and no one even tried to stop him? You're not going to like what I have to say because it sounds crazy, but it's true. The space aliens have most people in this society under mind control, and they told people to ignore the would-be assassin and do not stop him. The head of the Secret Service is totally incompetent and has no knowledge about security procedures. She was put in her position by whoever, and, and whoever put her in that position was told to do that by a space alien. It is clear, it is 100% clear, that the space aliens are the ones running things here on Earth. Most people are complete dunces who learn nothing in school, and yet they are, you know, they are given advanced degrees and, and, and high-paid jobs and powerful positions. With everyone being so completely ignorant and incompetent and not knowing anything, how do we even have things like electricity? Because our electricity is provided to us by the space aliens. Think of how hard it would be to provide your own electricity. In your arrogance, you might say, well, I'll just buy a bunch of solar panels and I'll be set. But you know, it's not that simple. For one, the electricity from solar panels is not directly usable. It requires very sophisticated equipment costing thousands of dollars in order to use electricity from solar panels. You know those, quote, cheap inverters that you could buy for just a few hundred dollars? They're total crap. Most of them don't work properly. These things are designed and put together in China, and they only sort of work. Most power inverters are designed and put together in China and they only sort of work, some of the time. No way would they work 24-7 with the kind of load that you need to power major items. There is no quality assurance. And if you think you could trust things like Amazon reviews for quality assurance, think again. Reviews on Amazon are not scientific. Some people only write reviews when they're mad about something. Other people always write positive reviews as soon as they receive something. The quality of manufactured goods changes from lot to lot. Yet, the reviews on Amazon are all clumped together. In fact, so many reviews on Amazon are clumped together, sometimes you can't even tell what products are being reviewed. Anyhow, enough of that. The only thing I can figure is that the space aliens are basically in charge here. I'm not saying I want to work, I'm not saying I want to have a job, but what I want is irrelevant. What I want is not completely irrelevant to me, but it's irrelevant for purposes of the argument I'm making here. This society won't let me have a job. It seems that the more someone learns in school, the more stupid people think they are. So now, before you can get a job, they sort of have a test to make sure you're stupid enough and enough of a hypocrite. And so that's why they won't let you have a job unless you have some kind of college degree or some kind of higher education. It's a test to make sure you are stupid, because only a stupid person 
would spend tens of thousands of dollars for schooling that they could get on their own for free. And you know, college doesn't care about knowledge. They just want you to write a bunch of papers. And you know, a chat GPT can write papers much better than most humans now. And I know what you're thinking. Now that generative AI, like chat GPT, has been released to the public, why not use chat GPT to breeze through college? You don't have to do anything then. The answer is twofold. And the other thing is that they have the chat GPT detectors, so, you know, they'll accuse you of plagiarism and expel you. No, no, no. In order to be anything in this society, you have to think like a mindless robot. Which makes sense, then, that almost everyone in this society acts like a mindless robot. As far as I know, they are mindless robots. So in order to be anything in this society, you have to give up your humanity and think like a mindless robot, even though a mindless robot can do things a million times better than any human. I mean, a mindless robot can do those things a million times better than any human. Anyhow, my rant got a little bit off course. I was trying to, I wanted to talk about something else. But let me continue on this subject for a while. We know that a lot of people are saying that AI and computers might even take over and usurp humanity in the coming years. The fact that they are forcing humans to think like robots in order for them to be allowed to be anything in this world also suggests that robots are going to take over soon. Think about it. Most humans are being forced to give up their humanity and their individuality in order to be allowed to make any money. In a few years, once the AI technology advances, it will become a drop-in replacement for almost all humans. Everything that is being done is a manipulation in order to weaken the human individual. The Democrats have some very severe ideas on how they're going to turn America into a totalitarian slave state if they are re-elected. They're going to start by saying that if you make any money on the side, then you will be taxed to high heaven. That means your only option will be to have a job. And if you want to have a good job, your only option will be to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for, quote, higher education, which, which is actually just a fascist scam. Which means that most people will be in debt by hundreds of thousands of dollars and they'll have to pay it back over most of their lives. In other words, most people will be slaves. Most people will become debt slaves for most of their lives. Most of their money will go towards paying interest on their school debt. And because college is actually fake, this society will actually become poorer and poorer. And it will crumble more and more. As the society crumbles, the cost of living will continue to increase drastically. If history is any guide, most people acquiesce agreeing to become slaves. Well, this is all fine and dandy, but how does this figure into the hypothesis that computers are going to take over completely in a few, in several years anyway? Or is it not true? Well, you know, only time will tell. For now, at least half of me thinks I'm already living in the future and that computers already have taken over. Assuming that most things in this world are a simulation, 
I'm at last beginning to learn the rules of this simulation. One of the rules, let, let's just make a list of the rules, okay? Rule number one, most of the things we're told are the exact opposite of the truth. Rule number two, we will be punished for obeying rather than rewarded. Rule number three, sometimes if we believe a certain thing to be true, it will manipulate things against us to make sure that thing is not true. Rule number four, there is no such thing as happiness. Therefore, if we become euphoric, then there must be something wrong and we should try not to become euphoric ever. Rule number five, we are not supposed to show any emotion. In particular, showing certain emotions similar to anger are considered worse than committing even minor crimes. And to tell the truth, I have to elaborate on number five a lot more. Because the fact that this society would punish us for obeying them also suggests they would reward us for disobeying them, and that they might also reward us for committing minor crimes on purpose. So, of course, let's take a scenario that makes sense. In one scenario, you do what you are told and learn in school, and you obey the law, and then what happens is that because you learn in school, they say you're stupid. And because you obeyed them, they start to punish you. Then you get upset because, after all, you didn't expect to be punished for doing what you were told. And when you get upset, they treat you worse than many criminals, locking you up, drugging you, and not allowing you out without, not allowing you out on bail. Let's take an alternative scenario. Well, actually, no. There is no alternative scenario as of yet. Let us take a follow-up scenario, like a scenario that occurs after this first scenario. In this follow-up scenario, you, you, after you do everything you're told, a society betrays you and treats you worse than the criminal, and prevents you from making a living, then you begin to steal some money from a society. You get away with stealing the money, possibly only because you went to prison for an unrelated issue, and then when you get out of prison, the money you stole is very helpful and allows you to survive for many years, but then the money runs out. Now, the money doesn't have to run out completely, but it just has to, you know, mostly run out. And when the money mostly runs out, the question is, do you steal more money? Do you choose to steal money again? The answer is yes. There is no other option. If they won't let you make a living or earn any money, then your only option will be to steal again. But before you steal money, you need to understand a few things, or at least a couple things. First of all, you need to understand that if they won't let you make a living or earn any money, and they're increasingly cracking down on any side hustles, so to speak, then you're, the only option you will have to make any money will be to steal money. So then secondly, it stands to reason that if you are going to steal money, then you better try to steal a hell of a lot of money, as much as you possibly can, at once. And thirdly, if you have to spend as much as $5,000 for the chance, for the future chance to steal a lot more money, then it's definitely worth it. Because $5,000 will 
won't allow you to live very long at all. But if you can then steal, you know, more like fifty thousand to five hundred thousand dollars, then that will increase your lifespan by many years. Because it's true, this is a fascist society, and if you don't have any money, they will practically kill you. Yeah, so let me reiterate this from the beginning. Number one, America is a fascist society, and if you don't have any money, they will practically kill you. Number two, if you are one of the few who learned a lot of things in school, then they will never allow you to earn a living through work or through side hustles. Number three, they are silently slashing welfare every single year by not allowing it to keep up with inflation. Finally, for our conclusions, we have no other options if we want to continue to be allowed to live and be free, we will have no choice but to try to steal as much money as we can in a few years' time. In other words, our final conflict with American society is only a few years away. And this time, we really have no choice. Because the combination of things that America is doing proves that they are dead set against us. And if we acquiesce to them, it will only lead to us losing our freedom completely. Our primary goal should be to steal as much money as we possibly can. Look at the guy who tried to assassinate Trump. He didn't just try to shoot Trump, he also had bombs and everything. We only need to steal money from America in one way, if we can steal enough money using that method. But if something goes wrong, we have to have several other plans and, and things in reserve. If you look, look at my last name, I'm not going to tell you what my last name is because it's, it's perfectly unique. But if you look at my last name, my last name basically means, it, or could be construed to mean, that I am someone who would basically kill everyone, or, or kill the whole world, or destroy the whole, whole world. And it's fully true, because if this world will not let me live out my life as a free man, then I don't care if, I, if what I do ends up destroying the whole world and killing everyone. I don't care. So all I'm saying is that my, with my plans, I should, I should make plans to try to cause as much damage as I possibly can. Not through violence or shooting people or buying people. I wouldn't bother doing that. But by using AI against humanity. I have to plan out ways to use AI to cause damage to humanity and get what I want if they will not allow me to live out the rest of my life as a free man. In fact, I should start doing that now. I should try, start using AI right now to cause mischief and mayhem without necessarily breaking the law. On a side note, you know that mayhem guy that works for the insurance companies? I'm a fan of his commercials. He probably, he probably has like nearly $10 million now for doing all those commercials on TV. My dad thinks his commercials are stupid, but I think they're brilliant. As human beings on Earth, we have one goal. There is, we have one job to perform. And that is to survive and remain free. The idea of helping society is archaic and outdated and not practical. The tone was set in the mid-1990s. Bill Clinton did two things. One, he did welfare reform, which ended welfare for everyone 
it was not disabled. And in subtext, I say, he also ended welfare for everyone who can't easily prove they are disabled, or who is not willing to say they are disabled, or is not willing to lie and say they are disabled, or who is not willing to take poisons in order to try to prove they are disabled to other people. The second thing Bill Clinton did is he signed the crime bill written by Joe Biden. With the passage of the crime bill, no one felt sorry for those who committed crimes anymore. Instead, they threw the book at them. That sounds good on the surface, but it's actually very nefarious because it means that they actually imposed on us the artificial concept of personal responsibility. The only argument to respond to society's requirement that we have personal responsibility, yet that society has no responsibility, is then to say that we are above society and we do not have to try to help society and that we can destroy society if it serves our goals that allow us to survive. So in other words, it's as if Bill Clinton and Joe Biden said, we are not going to help you anymore, so go ahead and do your worst to destroy society if it allows you to survive. And although I would rather live peaceably as a happy American Hickey Mori, they will not allow me to do that. The stage is set. It's simple reasoning and mathematics. I either have to steal a ton of money from America in four to ten years from now, or they will take away my, my freedom and kill me.